what was, what do you feel like your takeaway was from Guy Raz? Um, so he, he, you know, one thing that he said, his voice is very captivating. Like he's got this like mesmerizing voice, I think between <laughs> him and Simon Sinek, they have the most like mesmerizing YouTube voices out there. Uh, <laughs> But he, he, he's like, I'm a storyteller and I interview these companies. I'll sit with them for four or five hours to really like dig into them. And so he gave some different tips. Uh, he did do a deep dive into liquid death, which I think is super cool of a company. But one thing he said, he said in a crowded and competitive category, brand almost always trumps functional differences. Um, and I thought that was really, really interesting is like, you know, uh, liquid death and you look at you know, it's in a saturated market and everyone thinks of, of water as this purifying great thing. And, you know, uh, their founder decided to go the complete opposite way and build a brand on pairing death with water. And I just thought of it. I'm like, how many shops in our industry really focus on brand, like a brand agency and doing like market research and positioning and storytelling and aesthetic and like, like, and I was like, man, we're not doing enough to like make our brand really have a, a, a voice and a story and a message and, and, and things like that. So that was one of my biggest takeaways. Mm. Um, I don't know, Kevin, what did you think? Yeah, I was actually going to ask like your feedback on that because I, I agree. I do the, you know, the same as like, we, we spend a lot of time on like, you know, you know, the font choices we use for our logo or, you know, and like, we'll, we'll spend time on that. Um, I was going to ask you like, do you think, that's super important. Like at what point in a business does brand really make a difference? Right. Because I think there's so many things that, that make sense leading up to that. Like, I think you have to have it in mind. And I think a lot of that comes from who you are as people inside the business, mm-hmm. you know, like that's a lot of the brand. Um, but you know, I, I, do you think that's something that somebody at like when you get to like 5 million or do you think that's like something like even at a million dollars of revenue, you should really be thinking about uh, branding or is that just a diversion from like actually doing the work to build the business? Hmm. Well, I think you look at like the B2B world versus the D2C world, right? Right. And so, you know, if Liquid Death didn't have a crazy good brand story, you know, they were doing it pre-revenue. I don't know if it would have caught on as much as it did. I don't know. I think about like some of these brands that I see that are like, you know, they talk about Viore for a minute. Um, or you think about some of them and and how they look and feel and the emotional ties they bring. I feel like we undermined it and should be investing in it earlier because I do think good brand tells a good story. I don't know. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm torn. I'm torn by the same thing. I'm like, you know, I don't know, Bruce, what about, what about you? What do you I think? think? I think by a few million, it should be dialed and professional. I think Kevin, the, the reason is, is I feel it adds an element of conversion around sales. That's very hard to measure, but that extra 5%, maybe 10%, maybe compounds over a five year plus period. And so you know, when someone looks at something, it's like when you go to look at a restaurant, you know, if what is what it like, what is the feel of when I go browse Yelp, you know, mainly rating, okay, go look at the pictures, you know, is like, what does the inside look like, or things yeah. like that, that actually create a better environment than like, okay, like, yeah, I mean, I think my wife and I would like to go to this place. I feel that makes perfect sense for a company of, you know, either B2C, B2B or B2C, especially getting that size. And I say that size because that's probably when you could also afford to, to spend. I don't know, Steven, you're probably working in the agency. I can't remember what it was, but maybe 10,000 or 15,000 or 20,000 uh, more. Okay. So maybe 20 or 30,000 on a really good, clean image. But I do feel that at that point, you also have a bit of product market fit. And so you're making things more efficient versus sort of creating the brand before there is a fit. But to your point, yeah, you know, like Steven, you said, liquid that they, they needed that day one. They need that day one. I listened to, there's a really good podcast called Founder Stories. And they had an episode about Red Bull and the founder of Red Bull. And I was like, wow, that's interesting. I've never heard who, who is the founder of Red Bull? This Austrian guy. Um, you know, they've been working in the business for 10 and tens and tens of years, but they are a marketing and sales company. Right. They, that is all <laughs> that they do in house is marketing and sales. They literally 
outsource everything else, bottling, uh, manufacturing of, of, you know, juice or whatever, the liquid, the distribution, all that stuff is outsourced. The only thing that they have in house is the, like the branding and marketing and sales part. Because they're like, you know, anyone can pick an energy drink. It's, but it's how do we stand out and how do we position ourselves in the market? Again, more of an extreme story, but touches on, touches on that piece of it. Well, but, yeah, that yeah. makes it, well, I mean, that makes so much sense. Cause I mean, there's so many people who associate Red Bull completely not with the drink, right? You know, it might be the racing team or the off road team or like the snowboard team. And it's like, it's all based to sell more Red Bull so that when you like walk by it on the shelf, right? It's like, oh, cool. I associate with that F1 team. I'm going to drink. I'm going to drink the same thing that they're drinking, you know, but. I mean, Bruce, when you were growing Printavo, how important was aesthetic look, feel, brand, story? Like, I mean, you were kind of the face of it, but it's something that we recognize now. How important was that to you when you were building? For me, extremely important. My bias was though that I came from doing freelance design all the time. So I cared a lot about how things looked and felt when you went to it. How like was it clean? Was it easy to understand? Was it easy to use those those elements? And so I wanted to make sure that that was a part of it from day one. Um and I think that's what, you know, I I emulated the base camp 37 signals of the world because they were very easy and simple and and kind of underdid the competition in a way. Uh, around that, but I, but I think the Stevens point, I do think it's underinvested in absolutely. Um, and so we do it too late when we start thinking about it. 